Fairness in machine learning is a complicated issue. To make matters worse, the people responsible for building models do not necessarily have the skills to ensure that they are fair. This is because the reason for unfairness go beyond data and algorithms. And solutions will also need to go beyond these aspects of model development. To understand this, we'll start by discussing different quantitative approaches. We can divide these into pre-processing, in-processing, and post-processing methods. This division depends on what stage during model development they are applied. We'll end by discussing some non-quantitative approaches. To effectively address unfairness, it'll take a combination of quantitative and non-quantitative approaches. If you want a deeper look at some of these methods, as well as references, then check out the article linked in the description. Also, make sure to wait until the end of the video where I explain how you can get access to a Python SHAP course. Bias models can be a result of biased data. Pre-processing methods try to remove this bias from data before a model is trained. In a previous video, we discussed some sources of bias in data. One of those reasons was historical injustice being reflected in a target variable. For example, due to sexist hiring practices, we may end up with a higher proportion of women being rejected from job applications. To address this, one pre-processing method could be to do a review of old applications and to swap the target variables of unfair decisions. That is, we relabel some job applications and artificially increase the number of women hired in our data set. Another reason for an unfair model is proxy variables. These are model features that are highly correlated or associated with protected variables, such as race or gender. Other approaches look at repairing or removing this association between the protected variables and proxy variables. An example of such an approach is disparate impact removal. This works by modifying features so the distribution for the privileged and unprivileged groups becomes similar. Yeah, we can see how the income distributions for males and females have been modified. Disparate impact removal works by maintaining the rank order within the different groups. If you were the highest earner in the privileged group, you will remain the highest earner in that group. Only the rank order between the two groups is affected. The result is we will no longer be able to use the feature to distinguish between the two groups. At the same time, we will retain some of the feature's ability to predict the target variable. An advantage of pre-processing methods is that they can be used with any machine learning model. A major downside is that we lose the interpretation of our features. That is because after shifting a feature's distribution for multiple protected features, they lose their original meaning. Our next set of methods are in-processing methods. These aim to adjust algorithms so that they will produce fair models even if they are trained on biased data. For regression, one approach is to add a penalty parameter to the cost function. This works in a similar way to regularization, except instead of reducing model complexity and overfitting, we choose a penalty parameter that will reduce unfairness. We discussed some definitions of fairness in a previous video. We could choose a penalty parameter that will help satisfy one of these definitions, such as equal opportunity. In this case, we would penalize the model if it did not produce equal true positive rates for the privileged and unprivileged groups. The downside to these approaches is that they can be difficult to implement in practice. They require us to adjust well-established algorithms. The way we introduce penalty parameters will also be different for regression, tree methods, or neural networks. Our final set of quantitative methods are called post-processing methods. These work by adjusting the predictions made by the model. One approach is to use different probability thresholds for privileged and unprivileged groups. Suppose we build a logistic regression model to predict default on loan applications. If that model predicts a probability less than 0.5%, then we label that application as no default and give the person a loan. Suppose we find that using this probability threshold, the model is being biased towards women. That is a higher proportion of women 
who should receive loans are being rejected. We could fix this by raising the probability threshold for women only. An issue with this approach is that we need information about protected variables at time of prediction. That is, we need to know the person's sex in order to know which threshold to apply. In many situations, due to various legal or privacy reasons, this type of information is only available during training. Data scientists tend to focus on these quantitative approaches to fairness. As we have seen, they all have their own limitations. In general, it would be naive to assume that we can solve unfairness through adjusting data and algorithms alone. So, what are some of the non-quantitative approaches we should consider? The first is awareness of the problem. If you're watching this video, you probably don't have to worry about that one. However, this does also mean educating colleagues and other professionals about potential issues. In my experience, many data scientists do not even know that models can be unfair. Some will even refuse to believe that they can be unfair. We also need to accept that machine learning is not the solution to all of our problems. There are many unacceptable uses, such as predicting criminality using facial recognition. In these cases, the best solution to unfairness is to not to use machine learning at all. Instead of completely discarding machine learning, we can limit how it is used. This can involve applying certain manual checks or interventions on automated decisions. Going back to our loan example, instead of automatically rejecting or accepting all applications, we could introduce a third outcome, referred. In this case, the application would be manually checked by a human. We could design the referral process to limit the impact of unfair decisions. Model interpretability is also important for fairness. This involves understanding how predictions are made. Understanding the reasoning behind predictions will help ensure that they are made in a fair way. Interpretability will allow us to give explanations to users. Model predictions can have serious consequences for these people and they deserve reasons for any decisions based on them. Once a user is given an explanation, they can decide whether it is unreasonable or not. If they decide it is unreasonable, they must be given the opportunity to challenge these decisions. In this way, it is far more likely that any unfair decisions will be corrected. It is also important to consider who is building the models. Having a diverse team will bring a diverse set of lived experiences to the table. They will all have an understanding of how the system will impact their own lives. This will make it easier to identify potential fairness issues before the model is deployed. Lastly, unfairness in models or data is a reflection of unfairness in reality. If we address the true underlying issues, we can also solve the problem within our data. This will require a shift in company or government policy. Investing in diverse teams is one example of this. We can also advocate for affirmative action and push back against unethical uses of machine learning. As data scientists, we must accept that this means diverting resources away from quantitative approaches. But what do you think? Have I missed any important approaches to fairness? I'm interested to know how you've approached fairness in your own machine learning applications. As mentioned, model interpretability is related to fairness. And if you want to understand how your models are making predictions, then look no further than the Python SHAP package. My course will teach you both the application and theory behind SHAP. And for a limited time, you can get free access if you sign up to the newsletter in the description.